Okay, what is up there YouTube? This is J Man Time and today I have a video on some homemade tanks and armored fighting vehicles of the Bosnian War. From 1992 to 1995, the Bosnian War was the largest war in Europe since the end of the Second World War. The Bosnian War led to over 140,000 deaths. It was also the largest use of armored fighting vehicles in Europe since World War II also. During the Bosnian War, both sides, or all sides I should say, had their own variety of homemade armored fighting vehicles and even some homemade tanks and homemade artillery systems, mobile artillery systems, and mobile anti-aircraft systems that were made usually from old military vehicles or in some cases civilian vehicles that were fitted with either makeshift armor or makeshift weapon systems. Or in some cases, they were fitted with weapon systems that cannibalized from either abandoned aircraft or abandoned helicopters. So let's go over some of the rare homemade armored fighting vehicles of the Bosnian War. Now first, I will have to explain the history of the Bosnian War. The Bosnian War was a civil war, technically, in the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And this civil war was between the Bosnian Muslims the Christian Serbians, and also the Catholic Christian Croatian forces in this conflict. You also had one tiny faction that was also a Muslim enclave led by a multi-millionaire who wasn't really fighting for religious or cultural reasons. Now the main factions of the Bosnian War was the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina itself, which was led by a man named Aya Izabegovic, or Begovic. You also had the Croatian Republic of Herzeg Bosnia, or Herzeg Bosnia, which was led by a man named Franjo Tudman. And you also had the two Serbian enclaves, or two Serbian autonomous states, self-proclaimed states of the Republic of Srpska. Republic of Srpska was, was led by a man named Radovan Karavic, and the military wing was led by a man named Radkon Ladic. And you also had the Serbian Republic of Krajina, also known as the Republika Krajina, which was led by a man named Milan Babic. And then there is the tiny autonomous province of Western Bosnia. And this was a tiny Muslim enclave in the center of all of this, led by a man named Fikrat Abdik, or Abdic. And Abdic was a millionaire who owned a number of factories in the area known as Vilika Kladusa. Fikret Abdik was actually the first president of Bosnia and Herzegovina in 1990-1991 during the first election in that year. But he gave up his seat to Aya Izabegovic and later went on to continue running his company. Later on, when the Civil War broke out in 1992, he decided to create his own separate enclave known as Western Bosnia or Zapadna Bosna, as it was known as. And this is a tiny enclave that was in the middle of all of this chaos. So let's go over all of these homemade tanks and armored fighting vehicles of this conflict. First, we're gonna start with the Bosnian forces as they are the main focus of this conflict. The Bosnian army at the time mostly had leftover Yugoslav army vehicles and they had a host of homemade armored fighting vehicles. These were vehicles that were made from either civilian vehicles or were made from cannibalized parts of other military vehicles or just scavenged weapon systems taken from either aircraft or abandoned military surplus weapons. Now the Bosnian army had about 80,000 troops in total and they were mostly besieged from most of the conflict until about 1993 and 1994 when they finally managed to gain some coastal area. So let's start. The first homemade armored fighting vehicle to appear on the Bosnian side of the conflict was a rare homemade armored personnel carrier known as the Marsala Tita APC. And this is actually not the name of the vehicle. The vehicle has no name. It is a homemade armored personnel carrier that was spotted during the siege of Sarajevo in 1993. During the Battle of Sarajevo, Sarajevo, the city, was surrounded by Serbian forces, so it was cut off from the rest of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And it was not just the Serbs, there were also Croat forces from the Republic of Herzeg, Bosnia. These were the Croat Bosnians. So technically, the siege of Sarajevo was kind of a three-way battle, although the Croats did eventually help the Bosnians later on. Now, this homemade armored fighting vehicle had no main armament. 
It only was fitted with ports for small arms, mostly the automatic rifles and assault rifles that were used by the Bosnian forces. The armor thickness is unknown, but was most likely just 5 to 8 millimeters. The speed of this vehicle was estimated to be about 80 kilometers per hour or 49.7 miles per hour. It might have been based on a standard issued Yugoslav military truck at the time, and the crew capacity was only about 2 plus 6 troops in, in the rear area of the vehicle. Now, this vehicle only appears in a few photos that were taken in 1993 in an area known as Marsala. Tito Street, which was actually a street in the city of uh, Sarajevo. And this rear vehicle was only spied a few times and it was most likely either destroyed or simply abandoned as the siege of Sarajevo ended in 1995 at towards the end of the Bosnian War. Another homemade armored fighting vehicle from the Bosnian forces was the Bosnian Tom 150T11BV APC. And this was a homemade armored fighting vehicle that was built on a Yugoslav supply slash utility truck known as a TAM 150, which is one of the many trucks made by the TAM automobile manufacturing company, which was based in Yugoslavia before the Civil War. But also, most of these vehicles were spread out during the years before. So when the country collapsed or when Yugoslavia collapsed, many of these utility trucks ended up in the hands of pretty much all the factions fighting in this conflict. And so the Bosnians managed to make some homemade armored personnel carriers using these TAM utility and supply trucks. And this is one of the rare ones that was spotted between 1992 and 1993 being used by the Bosnian forces near the city of Sarajevo. This is during the time period in which the Bosnian forces were trying to both break out of the city of Sarajevo and break into. Now they did manage to create some supply lines during the fighting so there was always some sense of connection. There was always a way in and out of the city. But the city itself was a was kind of like a forward base in a way. It was a city that was under siege with literally thousands upon thousands of civilians trapped in the city. But it was also being held by the Bosnian army at this point. So they weren't just going to retreat and leave the city behind. And as a result, they began to issue some of their own homemade armored fighting vehicles and send them to Sarajevo via these small corridors and supply lines. And this is one of the vehicles that was spotted during the Battle of Sarajevo also. Another homemade armored fighting vehicle from the Bosnian army was the T-55. And this was a nickname for a armored fighting vehicle or, or improvised armored fighting vehicle spotted back in 1993. Now this vehicle here was built using a Yugoslav army transport vehicle or tracked transport vehicle or half track vehicle. And it was armored up using improvised armor. The main armament was one 12.7 millimeter DSHK machine gun or one 14.5 millimeter KPV heavy machine gun. The armor thickness was between 5 and 20 millimeters and the vehicle had a speed of 100 kilometers per hour or 70 miles per hour and a crew of six. Now only about one or two of these vehicles were built and only one of them still survives as a monument along with other vehicles at a military museum in the city of Sarajevo. This vehicle was made in 1993 and at least fought somewhere near Sarajevo during the conflict. Another rare Bosnian vehicle was the Bosnian SAU SO-76 Hellcat and this was the name of a modification of the old Russian T-55A chassis fitted with an American with a turret from an American Hellcat M18 Hellcat tank destroyer. Now this vehicle was put together in 1994 and I believe at least one or two of these were built. Now it's just a T55 with an M18 Hellcat turret. It was one of the last ditch or one of the improvised tanks that was put together by the Bosnian forces. It was armed with a 76 millimeter M1A1 main gun or M1A2 main gun. The armor thickness is 20 to 205 millimeters, so way more armor than the standard M18 Hellcat. The speed was just 48 kilometers per hour or 30 miles per hour, and it had a crew of four. Now I've seen several photographs of this tank, so I'm not sure if it was just one tank or at least one or more tanks, like at least one to five of these vehicles might have been made and they were spotted during the Bosnian War, being used by the Bosnian militias during the fighting between Bosnia and the Serb forces from Republika Srpska and Republika Krajina. 
Another rare modification vehicle that was spotted during the Bosnian War were the Bosnian modifications of the American M8 Greyhound. The M8 Greyhound is a World War II era light armored car or medium armored car that was used by US forces during the middle and towards the end of the Second World War. Now some of these were purchased by Yugoslavia during the Cold War and later on they were decommissioned and placed into storage and many of them were disarmed as they had their turrets removed. So the Bosnian forces took some of these old disarmed M8 Greyhounds and fitted them with 20 millimeter BMP M80 turrets armed with either a 20 millimeter or 14.5 millimeter machine gun. The armor thickness was 9.5 to 25.4 millimeters and the vehicles had a speed of 89 kilometers per hour or 55 miles per hour and they had a crew of four. Now only a one or two of these were spotted during the Bosnian War, so I don't know how many of these were actually made. Could have been as many as 10 or 20 as the Yugoslav army did use at least 100 or so M8 Greyhounds in the years before the collapse of Yugoslavia in 1991. So many of these vehicles could have been rebuilt into this Bosnian configuration of the M8 Greyhound which was first spotted in the year 1993. The Bosnians also made armed armored personnel carriers out of the Yugoslav Tom 150 heavy supply trucks. And this is another one that was spotted in 1992, actually before the first one that I, that I showed on this list. This one here was also fitted with a BMP turret, either a 20 millimeter or 14.5 millimeter machine gun turret, and it also had ports for small arms. But this one here seems to be more professionally made than the first one. It has the angular armor, and it looks very similar to some of the Soviet APCs that were also used by the Yugoslav army. The armor is somewhere between 5 and 10 millimeters, and the speed is only about 80 kilometers per hour, or 49.7 miles per hour. And this vehicle here had a crew of three, and could carry upwards of 12 troops and was spotted during the winter of 1992-1993 at the very start of the Bosnian War. Keep in mind, when Bosnia began its independence movement, they were already making homemade armored fighting vehicles in case a war broke out. So this vehicle might have been made before 1992, but it was not spotted until 1992. Another improvised vehicle used by the Bosnian forces were modifications of the Soviet UAZ-469, which is a Soviet utility jeep that has been used by the Soviet Union and later Russia since the 1970s and 80s. Now the Bosnians took several of these and turned them into improvised light multiple rocket launching vehicles. Starting in 1993, many of these were fitted with the with the 69.7 millimeter American-made SNEB 18 barreled rocket launcher or rocket pods. Now these were rocket pods that were meant for the American F-86 Sabre, which is a, an American fighter jet from the 1950s used in the Korean War. Now Yugoslavia also purchased some F-86 Sabres from Canada and many of these were decommissioned in the 1970s and 80s and their parts were later stripped from the aircraft. Now when the Bosnian War began, both Bosnian and Serb forces began cannibalizing these old F-86 Sabres for their weapon systems. And what they would do was they would take these Soviet era Jeeps and they would turn them into multiple rocket launching vehicles. Now this one here could be fitted with either two 69.7 millimeter American made SNEB rocket pods, or it could be fitted with two Soviet made 57 millimeter UB-16 rocket pods that were made for the MiG-21. The MiG-21 is a fighter jet that was also used by the Yugoslav and many of those were also cannibalized for their rocket pods and other armaments to be fitted to these homemade armored fighting vehicles. This UAZ-469 is one of the vehicles used by the Bosnian forces. These were also used by the Serbian forces too. They would also take these Jeeps and fit them with rocket pods from the F-86 Sabre and the Soviet era Big 21. Now some of these vehicles did have armor of between five and eight millimeter. They had some improvised hobo armor slapped onto them. And these vehicles had a speed of 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour. And they had a, usually a crew of two to three or maybe four in some cases. And they were used by both the Bosnian forces and also the Serbian forces from Regina and Republic of Srpska. And now let's go over the homemade armored vehicles used by the forces of the Republic of Srpska 
also known as the VRS. The VRS was led by a bunch of different commanders. There was the main army of the Republic of Srpska, led by Radovan Karavec, but there were also some Serb militias led by famous warlords like Arkin the Tiger, and you also had Mauser, Captain Mauser. Both of them were like former like drug lords and gangsters who were turned into like Serb militia leaders. Now Arkin led the Arkin Tigers, that was a militia that, that fought for both the Republic of Srpska and also the Republic of Krajina. And you also had Mauser's Garda Panther units. They were led by a man named Mauser. And they also fought for both the Republic of Srpska and Krajina. So these militias mostly used homemade vehicles, while the regular army of the Republic of Srpska mostly used Yugoslav era vehicles that they inherited from the now collapsed or partially collapsed army of Yugoslavia, as with the other factions in the conflict like the Bosnian and the, also the Croatian forces. So the first and most common vehicle on the list is the Garda Panteri UAZ. 469 IFV. Now, just like the Bosnians, the Bosnian Serbs also took the old Soviet UAZ uh, 469 and turned them into all kinds of vehicles. And one of the most common ones was this homemade armored fighting vehicle that was first spotted in the year 1993. Now these were made at various Serbian workshops and at least a dozen or so of these were built during the conflict. Now these vehicles had a main armament of either one 12.7 millimeter machine gun or one 14.5 millimeter KVP heavy machine gun. Some of these were fitted with one 20 millimeter four barreled M2 M24A1 anti-aircraft auto cannons or aircraft machine guns. Many of these machine guns were also cannibalized from the F-86 Sabre and the MiG-21 fighter jets. The armor was only five to eight millimeters and the, the vehicle speed was still just 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour and it had a crew of three. Now, the Serb forces would show these vehicles off in most of their music videos or propaganda videos and these are some of the most iconic Serb vehicles from the Republic of Srpska used during the war between the Serbs and the Bosnian Serbs. Between the Bosnian army and the Bosnian Serb armies. Pretty interesting vehicle. Um, at least a dozen, maybe upwards to a hundred of these were built during the conflict and they are seen all throughout photos of the, the armies and militias of the Republic of Srpska. Another improvised armored fighting vehicle was the Serbian AR-55 AFV and this is an improvised armored fighting vehicle that was built from an Italian AR-55 also known as the Campanola and these were these were Italian Jeeps that were sold to Yugoslavia in the 1970s and 80s and these were later taken over by the Serbs, the Bosnian Serbs during the Bosnian War and they were given improvised armor and weapon systems. The main armament was usually one 12.7 millimeter DSHK heavy machine gun or one 14.5 millimeter KVP heavy machine gun. The armor thickness was only just five or maybe eight millimeters and the vehicles had a speed of 116 kilometers per hour or 72 miles per hour in a crew of three. Now, only a small number of these seem to have been built, maybe like five to 10, and they were seen throughout the, the conflict between Bosnia and the Bosnian Serbs in the hands of the Republic of Srpska. Another homemade armored vehicle used by the Panther militia was the Garda Panther Tam 110 armored fighting vehicles or infantry fighting vehicles and these were improvised armored fighting vehicles that were first spotted between 1992 and 1993. These are based on the Yugoslav Tam 110 supply trucks or utility trucks that were armored up and fitted with anti-aircraft guns usually either one 20 millimeter Zestafa M55AZ three-barreled anti-aircraft autocannon or one 37 millimeter Soviet-made K61 anti-aircraft autocannon or one 30 millimeter Czech-made PLDVK Viz 53 anti-aircraft autocannon which was the same autocannon used on the Praga 53 anti-aircraft vehicle. The vehicle had an armor thickness of just a five to eight millimeters and a speed of at least 100 kilometers per hour and had a crew of at least three to four. And these were made, at least a dozen or so of these were made by the Serb forces and they were shown usually in the propaganda music videos that I'm pretty sure many of you have seen 
Now this vehicle was actually pretty effective. It was light. Uh, it could be fitted with just about any 20 to 30 millimeter auto cannon, or even the 40 millimeter um, American or, Sw or Swedish Bofors anti-aircraft auto cannon could also be fitted to this vehicle. And they were used all throughout the conflict um, between 1992 and 1995. Some of these were also captured by the Bosnian forces and later the forces of the Hazak Bosnia and later the actual Croatian army during the fighting between 1994 and 1995. Some of these were also given to the army of Western Bosnia under Fikrat Adik. And his Western Bosnian army were given a few of these by the Serb forces as they were allies with the Serb forces for most of the Bosnian war. So even the Western Bosnians got their hands on some of these armored TAM-110 IFVs. There was also an even rarer vehicle used by the Garda Pantherine known as the TAM-5000 IFV. And this was a homemade armored fighting vehicle that was based on the TAM-5000 um, heavy supply and utility truck. This vehicle was first spotted in 1993, 1994, and it was spotted in the hands of Serbian militias fighting in Western Bosnia. Now this vehicle was armed with one 40 millimeter, either American or Swedish made Bofors or Bofors L60 or L70 anti-aircraft auto cannon, or one Soviet made 37 millimeter K61 auto cannon. The armor thickness again was just, was just five to eight millimeters and the vehicle had a speed of at least 100 kilometers per hour and a crew of, of at least three to four. Now this video was actually spotted for the first time in 1993 and again in 1994 during the fighting in Western Bosnia. In 1994, the Bosnian army and the Croatian army invaded Western Bosnia, which was controlled by the, the Fikrat Abdik fella. And he later paid some of these Serbian militias to help repel both the Bosnian army and Croatian forces. This vehicle was spotted during the combat in 1993 and 1994, respectively. And it's one of the rarest vehicles to be spotted during the fighting in that area during the Bosnian war. There's also another version of the TAM vehicle known as the Barco TAM. And this is an armored version of the TAM 110 T7B BV utility truck military truck turned into an improvised armored fighting vehicle. This one was spotted in 1993 during the Battle of Breco or Breco. And this is an area that was right dab in the middle, right at the dividing line between Republic of Srpska, Bosnia, Sarajevo, and the Croatian forces. And this vehicle was armed with just one 20 millimeter Zestafa M55 AZ, three barreled anti-aircraft auto cannon, or one barrel in some cases. The armor thickness is only just eight millimeters. There was a tower on the back of the vehicle that mounted the anti-aircraft gun, and that was the only armored part of the vehicle. And the vehicle had a crew of just three to six, and only one of these were ever spotted in combat in 1993. The Serbs also took, also made armored gun trucks. These are gun trucks fitted with large cannons, or at least the field artillery. And one of these was known as the Garda Panther FAP-13 gun truck. Now the FAP-13 was a Yugoslav utility truck that was armored up by the Serb forces and turned into an armored gun truck. It was fitted with a 76 millimeter Yugoslav Zestafa M48 mountain gun that was mounted in the rear of the vehicle. And it also had either one or two heavy machine guns, usually a 12.7 millimeter or a 14.5 millimeter machine gun. The armor thickness was just five to eight millimeters and the vehicle again had a speed of around 100 kilometers per hour. The vehicle had a crew of six and only, a lot, only about one or two of these were ever built and they were spotted in various propaganda videos and photos from the Republic of Srpska. One of the coolest vehicles made by the Serb forces was the TAM-110 was the TAM MLR, improvised multiple rocket launcher. This was a TAM-110 military truck that was rebuilt into an armored, remote-controlled rocket launching system, multiple rocket launching system in 1993. This vehicle was armed with either two 69.7 millimeter American-made SNEB 18-barreled rocket pods or rocket launching pods. These were also cannibalized from the American F-86 Sabre jets, or they were fitted with two to four 
57mm Soviet-made UB-16 rocket pods from the MiG-21 fighter jets or from the Mi-24 helicopters. The armor thickness, again, was just 5 to 8 millimeters, and the vehicle, again, only had a speed of just 100 kilometers per hour, and it had a crew of at least 4 to 6. And at least a few of these were built by the Serb forces, and they weren't just built on the TAM-110. They were built on a variety of different Yugoslav-era utility trucks and supply vehicles. One of the coolest systems to be developed by the Serb forces, the Serbian forces during the war. Another system that was actually developed before the war was the Osran or Kosava TAM 150 IRAM. And this was an experimental improvised multiple rocket launching or multiple missile launching vehicle that was developed in 1993 and was first used in combat in 1994. Now this was a, just a Yugoslav TAM 150 supply truck or military truck that was turned into an IRAM. An IRAM is a improvised multiple rocket launching system or vehicle that could also launch improvised missiles. So you got improvised rockets and also improvised missiles. Now this vehicle, it had two to four rails that could fire either two to four 128 millimeter FAB 100 missiles or rockets, or it could fire two to four FAB 250 rockets but it could also fire two to four Soviet slash Yugoslav K-13 air-to-air missiles, so anti-aircraft missiles. These were aircraft missiles or aircraft air-to-air -air missiles from the Yugoslav Air Force that could be launched from this TAM-150 IRAM. It was usually called or nicknamed either the Ozrin or the Kosava, depending on which faction had these. Now these were actually developed by the Serb forces, but were also used by the Bosnian forces and by the Western Bosnian forces led by um, Fikrak Obdik. So these vehicles did see some use in the conflict, and they were mostly used by the Serb forces, and these vehicles were originally designed actually in Yugoslavia, in the Serbian held area, or Serbian portion of Yugoslavia. Now keep in mind, Yugoslavia didn't completely dissolve at this point. You still had Serbia and Montenegro representing Yugoslavia. So this vehicle was developed by the Yugoslavs, was most likely given to either the Republic of Srpska or Krajina, and some of these fell into the hands of Bosnian forces, of Bosnian forces from the main Bosnian army, or were given to the Serb allies in Western Bosnia. So this is a pretty unique vehicle and a pretty unique rocket launching system. It's very similar to the Volcano. The Volcano is a Syrian and Lebanese rocket launching system used in the Syrian war by both the Syrian army and some of the Iranian Shiite militias like the Hezbollah. So this is basically like that system, but in the Yugoslav wars back in the 1990s. Serb forces also made armored rocket launchers out of the TAM 5000. And one of these was known as the TAM 5000 M63 MLR. And this was an improvised multiple rocket launching vehicle from 1993. It was basically just a TAM 5000 um, heavy supply and utility truck fitted with a Chinese made or more than one, either fitted with one or two Chinese made M36 multiple rocket launching systems. These rocket launching systems fired 128 millimeter Chinese Type 63 rockets from a 32 barreled rocket launcher. Now the vehicle had a crew of six and an armor thickness of just five to eight millimeters and is one of the rarest vehicles used by the Republic of Srpska during the war. Republic of Srpska forces also made modifications to the chassis of the old T-54-55 tanks. And one of them is this vehicle here that was built by the Garda Panthery. And it is a T-55A fitted with a Bofors 40mm anti-aircraft gun in the place of its original 105mm main gun. Now this vehicle was spotted between 1992 and 1993 and is one of the rarer modifications of the Republic of Srpska to see frontline use. The armor thickness was 20 to 205 millimeters, so it was very well armored for a cobbled together vehicle. I mean, it's pretty much just a T-55 chassis with a Bofors anti-aircraft gun in place of its original turret. And then the final vehicles on the list are some of the homemade anti-aircraft systems used by the Re Republic of Srpska. 
Many of these were inherited from the Yugoslav army, and some of these were made as early as 1991, before there was even a Republic of Srpska. One of these is the JNA M53 Praga missile system, and this is actually an anti-aircraft vehicle, an improvised anti-aircraft vehicle that was based on the Czech M53-59 Praga, which is an anti-aircraft vehicle that was normally fitted with a 30 millimeter autocannon, but the autocannon was, was removed. Anti-aircraft missiles or air-to-air -air missile systems were put in its place. It could fire either one R60 AA-8 Ophid air-to-air -air missile, or it could fire the R73 AA-11 Archer air-to-air -air missile. And this is basically an improvised anti-aircraft vehicle using air-to-air -air missiles as its main anti-aircraft armament. The armor thickness was between 5 and 20 millimeters, and the vehicle had a speed of 60 kilometers per hour, or 37 miles per hour, in a crew of either 3 to 6 or 6 to 7. Now these were made originally by the Yugoslav army in 1991 at the start of the conflict with Croatia and Slovenia, but were later inherited by the army of the Republic of Srpska as the Yugoslav army retreated back to what was left of Yugoslavia, which was mostly just Serbia and Montenegro at this point. And they were later used by the army of the Republic of Srpska and the Republic of Krajina during the rest of the conflict. Some of these were also armored versions. There were also armored variants that were based on the FAP-13 or the TAM-110 or 150 gun trucks. So it wasn't just the Praga vehicle that was used as the basis. You also had some of the other supply trucks that were turned into improvised armored anti-aircraft systems. And this is just one of the many. And then you also had another variant of the Praga M53-59 that could fire the Yugoslav K-13 PA air-to-air -air missile system. And these were also introduced by the Yugoslav army at first in 91 and were later given to the Republic of Srpska and Krajina later on from 1992 through 1995. And these could fire the Soviet-made K-13 missile, and they could carry between the two and four missiles. So these were some of the improvised Serbian or Bosnian Serb um, homemade armored, in some cases armored, anti-aircraft missile systems from the Bosnian war. And let's move on to the other Serbian entity, the Serbian Republic of Krajina, or Republika Krajina, also known as the RSK. The RSK was at first led by a man named Milan Babic, but the leadership changed throughout the conflict. And they also had their own brand of improvised armored fighting vehicles. The first improvised armored fighting vehicle again was the Soviet-made UAZ-469 IFV, this time made by the Republic of Krajina. And these were modified utility vehicles that were turned into partially armored fighting vehicles or armored technicals. They were fitted with either one 7.62 millimeter machine gun or one 12.7 millimeter machine gun. Some were fitted with rocket pods, usually the 57 millimeter UB-16 rocket pods from the Soviet MiG-21 fighter jets. The speed again was 100 kilometers per hour. The crew capacity was between three and six, and these were used by both Krajina and Republic of Srpska forces. You also had this strange monstrosity, the Gladin Jura and Kristina, which are two improvised armored demining vehicles from 1992. Now these are actually homemade demining vehicles made from bulldozers that were once part of the Yugoslav army, but later became part of the Republic of Srpska and Krajina, in this case Krajina. Now these armored vehicles were fitted with either one 7.62 millimeter light machine gun or one 12.7 millimeter heavy machine gun, either a DSHK or a 14.5 millimeter KVP heavy machine gun. And they also had an armor thickness of just five to eight millimeters. Only two of these seem to have been made and they were later captured by Croatian forces sometime between 1994 and 1995 during the fall of Krajina. Now, Krajina actually fell to the Croatian and Bosnian forces in 1995 during what was known as Operation Storm. And these vehicles were later captured by the Croat and Bosnian forces and were used by them towards the final months of the conflict. So a pretty rare vehicle. The Republic of Krajina 
also made improvised semi-armored or just unarmored multiple rocket launching vehicles based on the TAM 150 and these were TAM 150 trucks that were fitted with the UB-16 multiple rocket launching pods from the MiG-21s and the Mi-24 Soviet aircraft. So these are pretty cheap. They also made some they also made improvised anti-aircraft systems using the TAM-150, this time being able to fire the Soviet K-13 air-to-air missiles and modifying them into homemade unarmored anti-aircraft vehicles that were also used by both the Republic of Krajina and also the Republic of Srpska. Only a small number of these seem to have been made. These are the TAM-150 SPOGs or self-propelled anti-aircraft systems that were built from standard military supply and utility trucks formerly used by the Republic of Yugoslavia or Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. You also had another variant of the Praga M53 slash M59 known as the RL-4M and the RL-4M was a modified Praga M53-59 into a modified armored anti-aircraft vehicle firing either the R-60 or the R-73 air-to-air missiles and becoming a anti-aircraft platform being used by the Republic of Krajina. It seems that only one or two of these vehicles were built as I can only find one clear photo of this vehicle. And then there is the Republic of Srpska's strangest military project known as the K-15 Krajina missile. This was another IRAM or improvised rocket slash missile system. Now this one was developed between 1994 and 1995 and it was an experimental improvised tactical ballistic cruise missile system. Now this was Krajina's secret weapons project. This was the secret weapon of the, the Bosnian Serbs in the Republic of Krajina. And it was pretty much a scare weapon. They, was, they showed this in some of their propaganda photos and videos. And no one knows if it would actually work because there's no video of this weapon system being fired at all. So it was kind of like a goofy scare weapon, but it might have worked, I, we don't know. But it was pretty much just a Soviet era P-15 termite anti-ship missile system fused with the launch pad uh, or launching device of a Soviet era S-75 Davina, which is an anti-aircraft missile system. So the Bosnian Serbs and Krajina took these two missile systems, slapped them together into this Frankenstein weapon system and showcased it as a scare weapon. Now the missile, if it worked, the missile was said to have a warhead that weighed about 1,000 pounds or just 454 kilograms. So not a very large payload for this missile system. Its range was said to be 150 kilometers or 93 miles. And the missile speed is about 723 miles. 723 miles per hour or just Mach 0.95. So not really that fast. The missile system was showcased in 1995 and disappeared. Some say the missile system was destroyed or the missile system was captured by the Croat or Bosnian forces during the collapse of Krajina in Operation Storm in 1995. But whatever happened to it, this missile system was the Krajina scare weapon of the Bosnian war. And then you had the coolest weapon system or the best weapon system developed by the, by the Bosnian Serbs of the Republic of Krajina. And that is the Krajina Express. The Krajina Express was an improvised armored train that was actually developed by the Yugoslav army in 1991 and it was fitted with all kinds of weapon systems it was basically a mobile armored fortress on the train tracks now this weapon system was developed by the yugoslav army and was later given to the army of krajina once the yugoslav forces began to pull out and those yugoslav troops that were living in the area inherited this vehicle when they became part of the newly formed army of the army of the Republic uh, of Krajina. Now this armored train had an armament, a main armament of one 76 millimeter American, American M1A2 tank gun from the American M18 Hellcat. In fact, there was an actual Hellcat that was fused to this armored train. It also had a Soviet made 76 millimeter Zis-3 anti-tank gun. 
It also had two to three 40 millimeter Bofors anti-aircraft auto cannons, two 20 millimeter German World War II vintage Flak 30 and Flak 38 anti-aircraft auto cannons, two Soviet 57 millimeter UB-16 or UB-32 rocket launching rocket launcher pods from the MiG-21 and Russian Mi-24 well, fighter jets and attack helicopters. It also carried two two 120 millimeter mortar systems, two 12.7 millimeter DSHK or DSHK heavy machine guns, or two 14.5 millimeter KVP heavy machine guns. It also carried two 7.92 millimeter Yugoslav Zestafa M53 light machine guns and two 7.62 millimeter Russian machine guns, either an RPK or a, a PKD light machine guns. The armor thickness was 5 to 25 millimeters and the train overall had a maximum speed of 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour. And they had a crew of at least 100 to 150. Now this train was usually spotted going back and forth throughout Krajina and it was used on various front lines. It was mostly used as a infantry support vehicle. It was an armored train used as an infantry support vehicle as they, there was a railroad system that went throughout all of Krajina. So it could show up on multiple front lines. It was also a morale boosting vehicle. Whenever it would show up, it was meant to boost the morale of the fighters from the Republic of Krajina. Now, sadly, at the end of the Bosnian War in 1995, this vehicle was destroyed by the Bosnian Serb forces. The Bosnian Serb forces ran this vehicle off the tracks into the nearest river system, thus destroying this one-of-a-kind armored train that was once part of the Yugoslav army, but later became part of the army of the Republic of Krajina. That's basically it for the homemade weapon systems and armored fighting vehicles from Serbian Krajina. Next, let's talk about the homemade, some armored fighting vehicles that were made by the Croatian Republic of Hazeg Bosnia. Now, Hazeg Bosnia was led by a man named Franjo Tudman. And at first, he was actually at war with the Bosnian army. There was a period known as the Bosniak-Croat War, or the Croat-Bosniak War, in which the Croatian Bosnians fought the regular Bosnian army. And this lasted from 1993 to 1994. Some sources state 1992 to 1994. And during this conflict, the Croatian Bosnians made some of their own armored fighting vehicles. And the Croatian Bosnians were also fighting the army of the Republic of Srpska and Republic of Krajina as well. So technically they were fighting three different factions at one time. And then later on, they ended up fighting the faction known as Western Bosnia also. So they fought four different factions throughout the conflict and they had to make some of their own homemade armored vehicles as well. The first and heaviest homemade armored fighting vehicle used by the, the Croatian army of Hezek Bosnia was the, was the Tom Islavgrad APC. The Tom Islavgrad APC was a homemade armored fighting vehicle that was spotted in use by the Croatian Bosnians in 1993 during the fighting in the early stages of the Croat Bosniak War. This vehicle was spotted in the town of Tom Slavgrad, which is a town that was populated by both Croats and Bosnians. And so this town was kind of like a front line between these two forces. This vehicle had a main armament of either one 7.62 millimeter machine gun or one 12.7 millimeter machine gun or one 14.5 millimeter KPV machine gun and a rotating tower like turret on top of the vehicle. It also had at least eight to 10 ports for small arms, you know, rifles and machine guns. So this was a, an old style armored personnel carrier like you would see in World War One or Two, The armor thickness was just 5 to 8 millimeters, and the vehicle had a speed of between 70 and 100 kilometers per hour, or 45 to 62 miles per hour. Now, this vehicle was said to have been built on a TAM 150 or TAM 125 supply or utility truck. And at least one or two of these were built by the Croatian Bosnians of Hazag Bosnia. They were used during the Bosnian-Croat-Bosniak War, of 1992 to 1994. Another rare vehicle used by the Croatian Bosnians 
was the was the King Tretgo APC. And this was an improvised armored personnel carrier that was spotted during the Battle of Sarajevo or Siege of Sarajevo. Now this was the area of Sarajevo that was controlled by the Croat Bosnians. And this vehicle here was used by the King Krivko Brigade, which was the brigade of Bosnian Croats stationed in Sarajevo. At first they were just fighting the Serb, the Bosnian Serb forces, but later on during the Croat Bosniak War, they also fought against the Bosnian forces too. And this is one of the homemade armored fighting vehicles used in that area of the conflict in Sarajevo. The main armament was one 7.62 mm light machine gun, usually, or just small arms. The armor thickness was only 5 to 8 millimeters, and the vehicle had a speed of at least 100 kilometers per hour. The vehicle had a crew of two and could carry between six and eight troops, and it was only spotted during the siege of Sarajevo. Now, the vehicle today is actually part of a museum piece in Sarajevo. You can actually see this vehicle if you visit the city of Sarajevo today. And it's one of the few vehicles from the conflict, from that particular battle or siege, that is still around as a museum piece in this modern day. Now the Croatian, the Bosnian Croat army also made some homemade rocket launchers. And one of the most common ones were rocket launchers that were based on the TAM 150 series of supply trucks. Now this one here is known as the HOV TAM 150 Orgun. And it is an improvised multiple rocket launching system from 1993 to 1994. It is basically an improvised version of the Yugoslav M87 Orkin, which was a standard rocket launching system of the Yugoslav army. Now this is just a TAM truck with an Orkin rocket launcher on the back of it usually. The rocket launching equipment it is placed on a TAM 150 truck, but in some cases it was fitted with the standard 262 millimeter improvised rockets that were made by the Croat forces also. Or they, would, they could use the rocket launching system from the Grad system, which was another rocket launching system used by the Yugoslavs and also the Croat forces during the conflict. Now the vehicle had a crew of at least a four to six. The speed is unknown and it is unknown if this vehicle had any armor. It is only seen in a few photos and footage of the conflict. Now the Croatian forces also had some standard rocket launchers that were inherited from the Yugoslav army including the M77 and M87 working rocket launchers. But this one here was one of the rare or homemade variants made by the, the, the Croatian army of Hasek Bosnia. And then finally we get to the last faction on the list. These are the homemade weapon systems and homemade armored fighting vehicles of the autonomous province of Western Bosnia, also known as Zapadna Bosna. And this was the tiny little republic or autonomous region that was led by a man named Figrat or Avdic. Avdic was the original president or first president of Bosnia and Herzegovina in 1990-1991, but later gave up his position to Aya Izabegovic, who would become the first president of Bosnia, of the independent Bosnia and Herzegovina. In 1991 to 1992, he had created his own breakaway republic or breakaway autonomous region known as Western Bosnia. And he also had his own private army or militia made up of his supporters, made up of his original supporters or just locals from the area known as the People's Defense of Western Bosnia, also known as the NOZB, which had only about 10 to 12,000 fighters in total. Now the area of Western Bosnia was a very small area, just 69 miles worth of territory in total. So the entire area, this entire like mini state was only 69 miles long and 69 miles wide. Only about 40 to 60,000 people lived in this area. And the capital city was Velika Kladusa, which is the actual home of Figaret Avdic. During the conflict, during the Bosnian War, Avdic relied on both his own private army and also mercenaries from the Serb factions, Arkans Tiger and Nauzers Panthers, or Panthers. So the Serb militias were being paid to fight 
for the Western Bosnian Muslim army. And the Western Bosnian army wasn't just a Muslim army. There were tons of Serbs, Slovenians, and other non-Bosnians who were living in the area. Many of them came there before the Civil War began in the 1970s and 80s. So it was a pretty diverse mini state and only about 40 to 60,000 people lived there. Now this area was actually, it was surrounded on all sides by the Serb forces on one side, the Bosnian Croats in the south, the Croatian army in the west, and also the army of Krajina. And they were also surrounded by the main Bosnian army and main Bosnian forces coming from the south and southeast, southeastern direction. Now during the fighting, the Serb forces actually supplied the Western Bosnian army with at least one of the Osrin or Kosova or Kosava TAM 150 IRAMs that I mentioned earlier. These are the improvised or experimental rocket launchers developed originally by the Serb forces and given to the Republic of Serbia, the Republic of Srpska and Krajina. So at least one of these were seen in Velika Kladusa during the fighting between Western Bosnia and the main Bosnian army. Another armored vehicle that was used by the Western Bosnian army is a vehicle that has no name, but I will call it the Velika Kladusa TAM 110 AFV, improvised armored fighting vehicle that was spotted in 1994. Now this vehicle was most likely built by the Serbian militias and given to the Western Bosnian army. It was armed with either one 37mm Soviet K61 anti-aircraft autocannon or one 40mm Bofors L60 or L70 anti-aircraft autocannon. The armor thickness seems to be at least 5 to 8 millimeters, like most of the other Serb vehicles and the speed is unknown and the vehicle seems to have a crew of at least 3 to 4. This vehicle system was most likely built by the Republic of Krajina or Republic of Srpska and then given to the army of Western Bosnia and it was seen in 1994 during the counteroffensive by the by the joint Western Bosnian and Serb forces known as Operation Spider. Now during Operation Spider the Western Bosnian and Serb forces were trying to recapture lost territory as the Bosnian and Croatian armies had taken over a huge chunk of Western Bosnian territory in 1994. So this was the counteroffensive, and this vehicle was spotted during the counteroffensive, operating alongside some of the Serb and Western Bosnian M18 Hellcats, T5455s, and other armored fighting vehicles. And then there is the last vehicle on the list, and these are the fighting tractors as they were known as. And these are not just Western Bosnian, these are also Serbian tractors too. Now, during the last year of the conflict, both the forces of Western Bosnia and also the Serb forces in Republika Srpska and Krajina began making homemade armored tractors. These were agricultural tractors that were fitted with armor and armaments, usually a 12.7 millimeter DSHK heavy machine gun or a 14.5 millimeter KVP heavy machine gun. The armor thickness was pretty light only just two to five millimeters over vital areas and the vehicle speed is largely unknown. The vehicles had a crew of between two and three and they were used by both by the armies of Western Bosnia, the army of Republika Srpska and the army of Republika Krajina as a last ditch vehicle towards the end of the fighting in Bosnia between 1994 and 1995. Now funny thing this vehicle was first made by Croatian forces at first in 1991 during the Croat War of Independence and was later copied by the Serbs and later the Western Bosnian forces themselves. So these homemade tractors were used by pretty much all sides at the start and at the very end of the conflict. And there you have it. These were the homemade armored fighting vehicles of the Bosnian War. Which of these were your favorite? Please tell me in the comments section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time, signing off.